Welcome back to Refit and So. My name's George, this is the Silent Boat Butler, and in this episode, we're going to be doing some filling and fairing on this rudder. If you watched last week's episode, you will recognise this rudder, and at the end of that episode, I said, and uh, this rudder's all ready for the owner to come and collect. Um, the piece of information I didn't share with you is. Earlier in the um, repair of this rudder, I did say to the owner, it's a little bit wavy and wobbly, the, um, the surface on here. There's a bit of a hollow there, there's a bit of a hollow there, and it's not really a perfect surface. And he said to me, well, don't worry, George, that's fine. I'm not a racing man, and I'll be quite happy with it, just repaired and, you know, just a good rudder to use. He then subsequently said to me, actually... Would you mind filling and fairing it just so that it's as good as it can be? Because it seems silly not to if it's in your workshop. So I'm going to be back uh, working on this rudder again. So I need to prep this surface. Fortunately, this is an epoxy based coating that I've put on top of here. So this is Hypertech 2. So I'm going to be sanding this back just to give it a key. I don't need to take it all off. The only area where I will probably sand it back a little bit more is on this leading edge because I know that there is only a very, very small gap on this particular boat between the leading edge of the rudder and the skeg. So I'm going to give that a really good buzz over, but this area is just going to get flatted back and also just given a really good key using 80 grit. So I'm going to start off with doing that and then I can come back in and start the filling process. <laughs> Now it's quite difficult to get me and the rudder in shot at the same time and also give you a slightly closer view but um, you can see that I've done all the sanding that I wanted to do and uh, I've also thinned down the back edge ever so slightly. I've taken it down in some places just to the gel coat in other places down to the mat just to try and get that to a uniform surface. That is now effectively a reference surface. This is effectively the same reference surface on the other side and what I want to do is try and get this as flat as possible. Try and draw a picture in a minute to explain what I'm trying to achieve but what I'll do is just bring in this aluminium angle and if I put that on those two reference surfaces you can see at the bottom here there's a pretty massive gap hopefully you can see that on the video it looks like you can uh, I'll bring it up to the middle here it kind of closes up it's um, pretty close there but then at the back edge here it's uh, quite open again and then it opens up again for a hollow and then as we get up to the top that gap closes and closes until it virtually disappears if I go the other way it does rock slightly on the middle because there's a high point here and a low point um, at each end. So it's going to be a bit of a game of trying to work out a level that looks pretty reasonable across the whole rudder without me kind of removing too much material here. This is just the nature of the very early rudders. They are a little bit undulating. Let me draw a picture and I'll try and explain what this looks like if you're not familiar with Contessas. So the easiest way to do this is actually to draw on the rudder because I can't find any paper at the moment, but um, that won't matter. So uh, if you look at the rudder and the skeg from the top, imagine the hull isn't there and you've just got the skeg. Ignore that for a minute. That is the skeg. And at the moment, the rudder sits behind that skeg and it currently kind of I'm exaggerating slightly but it kind of does that at the moment which is not a particularly brilliant aerofoil shape so what I am trying to achieve is a straight line all the way down there because you've got to remember that um, a sailboat is a bit like an aeroplane so it has two foils rather than two wings and one foil sticks up into the air and one sticks down into the water and if you can imagine this is the front piece of a wing on an aeroplane that is normally fixed and then the back part normally has flaps which can extend and move and go up and down. Now we can't necessarily uh, extend the foils on a boat 
um, that definitely wouldn't be class illegal for a Contessa 32. But we can obviously swing them left and right like this. Um, because unlike an aeroplane, you want to be able to steer on port tack and starboard tack and turn left and right, unlike an aeroplane, which only flies the right way up, you need to have these two surfaces being identical to each other. So the ideal is to have it reasonably flat or ever so slightly convex potentially, um, but certainly not concave like that. It's not a great look and certainly isn't particularly performance. The problem I've got at the moment is um, it's not uniformly concave. In some areas it's more concave than in other areas, so I'm going to come in and fill this area and hopefully end up with something that looks a bit more of an approximation of this one here. So what am I going to be using for filling this in? Now, if you saw my previous video uh, when I did the repairs on this rudder, this pink filler or fairing compound that I've got here is a Nautix product, but I'm not actually going to be using that for this because it needs quite a lot of filling and the Nautix stuff is, it's not expensive, but it's more expensive than some other options which are equally as good. Um, I'm going to be using bog standard epoxy resin. This is a three to one resin, it's called Ampro. Uh, and I use it quite a lot, and uh, I'm going to be thickening that up with various um, thickening agents, low density filler from West Systems and some uh, micro balloons as well, probably. And the reason I'm doing that not only is uh, based on cost, but it's also based on the fact that if I mix up my own bearing compound, I can control its consistency. So if I want it a little bit thicker so that it is easier to sand, then that's something that I can achieve quite easily. So I'm going to give this a wipe down with some acetone on both sides to make it nice and clean uh, and then I can mix up some fairing compound. And there we go, that's the first fill done. I've got some material left over. Um, I was only gonna do one side, but I'm just looking at this and wondering if it's gonna be possible for me to flip this over and rest it on the four corners and then see if I can get some of this filler on the other side, because um, if I can use it up, that's always good. And it also gets me ahead of just doing one side at a time. I'm going to give that a go. It is pretty rough. It's definitely going to take two fills, if not three, to get this to the kind of shape that I'm looking for. But you can see how much material I have put on there. I will knock that back and put a second coat on once this is all cured. And when I sand it back, I'll be sanding it using probably my flexi sanders, but um, fixed into a flat position so they don't conform as uh, this thing does. So I was spreading it out with a uh, another flexi sander tool. It's a, this is a kind of a filling trowel, um, which does conform to the shape, um, which isn't ideal for this, but it's the best thing I've got for doing large surfaces and you get a pretty good result with it. So that's what I've gone with. Uh, we'll knock it back and uh, see how it looks in a day or two. And there is the other side 
of the rudder had its first fill. You can see there's some lumpy bumpy bits at the bottom there, but it's a pretty reasonable starting point, I think. So uh, I'm going to let that cure and come back in a day or two. Now, you may have noticed that I was struggling with my first batch of epoxy filler to get it down and uh, get it nice and flat. And that's because I'd made it a little bit too thick and it was quite hard to work. So that second batch that I put on on this side was much, much easier because it's not going to drip off because it's on a um, flat surface on this side. I could make it a little bit easier to work with. So, um, so that was all good. Right, I'm gonna go and get some lunch because I'm absolutely starving. It's now the next day and this epoxy filler uh, fairing compound that I have put on has pretty much cured, I think, which is good because I wasn't 100% sure it was going to. I left the heating on right underneath the bench here, so um, it has been kept warm all night and I think that has done it. But um, the question is, how do you know when your epoxy is cured enough to sand it? Well, I'm going to show you that right now. First of all, I'll rub my nails into it and I'll just see how kind of soft or hard it feels and that's kind of the first test if it's obviously soft under your nail and you can stick your nail into it then it needs to cure more before you can sand it if that looks good I will get myself a little bit of sandpaper I've got a small bit here uh, and I will just give it a little sand on a high spot and I'll just see how well it sands and what you're looking for is nice kind of fine dust coming off it which is kind of what we're we're getting here which is which is good so that is perfectly sandable if you find it is clogging the paper slightly but if you find it's clogging the paper a lot then it's still a bit too gummy it still needs to cure a little bit more but i think this is just about i mean ideally i'd leave it another six hours but i'm going to take this out into the dirty part of the workshop and give it a buzz over see what it looks like because if i can get a second coat of varying compound on this rubber today then that would be excellent. Partly because it's raining outside and it's gonna be dry later on. So uh, I can do this whilst it's raining. That's the rudder blade sanded. I was using my longboard, which I can set to be completely straight. So it has a little aluminium angle that you can kind of lock into place along the blade. So um, that stops it from flexing and it keeps it pretty much straight. So that allowed me to use the reference surfaces. I think I used that term in the last segment. The reference surfaces being the front edge and the back edge or the leading edge and the trailing edge. Uh, and then I can run the longboard over that and knock down any high spots. And then what I did Afterwards, as I came back in just with hand sanding and just scratched up any areas that it didn't touch. Now, the particular epoxy that I'm using here is quite good for this sort of project because if you overcoat with a new layer of the same epoxy, it will achieve a chemical bond between the layers as long as you do it within about two to three days. Beyond that, you're you're pushing your luck and it's just gonna be a mechanical bond. But um, because I only put this on yesterday, I can never get another coat on today and I'll get a chemical bond between the two layers of this filling material. So that's excellent. I'm gonna give this a wipe down with some acetone just to get rid of any residual dust or dirt that has got on the surface. Mix up the next batch of filling material and uh, get it all applied. <laughs>
we are. The second fill is on the rudder and um, it's looking much, much nicer with that second layer on here. I am going to have to definitely do a third fill. I thought I probably would have to. Um, there's just a few little areas where as I'm dragging the trail across to um, smooth it out, I just couldn't quite get it to fill and stay whilst dragging. So that's just the nature of how much material I'm having to put on to get the surface up to where it needs to be. The other side, be the starboard side, is looking pretty close but um it'll almost certainly once it's been buzzed over tomorrow need a second fill again so the um filling knives that i'm using these are um from flexi sander it's the same company that make the long board that i was using a little earlier uh, for the sanding they're really useful and the idea is that you are putting the material on and then you run this over it will if you're doing a curved surface it will conform to the shape but what i'm trying to do is keep it kind of on its edge so it's not bending too much and it allows me to make as fair a shape as possible but also remove as much additional material as possible because it's removing material that i would have to sand off um, so these these are a big time saver if you're doing this sort of job so well worth it you can do it by hand you can do it using kind of these things um, but it's not as accurate it's not as fast these are well worth the investment if you're doing lots of filling and fairing the other thing i can't remember if i talked about what um filling material i'm using i talked about the fact that it's an epoxy um i am thickening the epoxy with i've got a big bucket of 407 i'm also using this stuff which is called q-cell it's a very lightweight filler that is compatible with polyester and epoxy it says um inorganic microspheres makes it very easy to sand so i quite like using the two uh together because the q cell just makes it a little bit lighter and a little bit easier to sand although the low density filler is actually not that hard to sand but um, it makes life slightly easier and slightly quicker on a job like this where you're not doing a structural filling job um it is just a filling and fairing job if that makes sense right i'm going to let this set up i've got some work to do back in the boatyard and i'll be back tomorrow to continue the fun it's now the next day and uh it is snowing and quite unpleasant outside um it's very very cold so i'm quite pleased i left the heating on in here so that this could cure overnight when i say cure it does still feel ever so slightly um well we'll see if i can sand it i will sand it if i can't then i'm going to have to come back later um if necessary i can prop it up right against the heater just to get some real heat into it and i'll definitely be able to sand it later it's looking pretty good though i'm really pleased with how this is coming up to um the kind of profile that i was wanting if i stick my straight edge on it run that down there it's looking pretty perfect across it maybe ever so slightly high in the middle which it was before um and going this way pretty spot on there uh perfect in the middle and up the top i think it might be slightly overfilled yes it is so i've got a bit of material to remove up the top there but that's absolutely fine because I, it's much easier to remove material with the sander than it is to put it on and it's the same hopefully on the other side if i flick this over then again it's looking pretty good there's the odd little bit which may or may not sand out probably needs a fill um, but it might need another little bit of material down the bottom there middle's looking perfect and up the top you can see a little bit of light so it might need a little fill there but not there um, but that's why we do this fill sand fill process using these edges as reference using my longboard sander just to get it um, as good as we can uh, within the realms of what's reasonable to spend on a very, very old rudder. Because let's remember, we could go out and buy a new one, um, but we're trying to salvage this one um, at reasonable cost. And so I'm going to go and take this outside, give it a sand, and we'll see what it looks like. Just done my little sanding test like I showed you in the previous section, and I think we're going to be okay because it is sanding to quite a nice fine dust this is a 240 i'm guessing yeah 240 so if the 240 is doing it to a nice fine dust i'll be able to get at it with my 80 grit on the longboard and knock that down so i think we're just about okay here
that is the second sand and the third fill done as you have seen this side which is the port side i had to think then for a minute um this side which is the port side needed to have a lot more material put in here it was a it was a little bit of a hollow still there it was a bit of a dip the rest of it wasn't too bad i suspect i've overfilled it here slightly but i'm kind of leaving it alone now because otherwise i'm going to ruin the surface that i've got there and that's easy to knock down with the long board tomorrow so i'm going to go away leave this uh not touch it and see what it looks like with a straight edge on it tomorrow but i think or i certainly hope that this is the last fill that i'm going to need to do unless there's any little bits um that uh that that pop up when i'm sanding but um when you're working the material in you'll notice that i mix it in there and then I actually then kind of mix it again on the rudder itself and that's just to work out any little bits of filling material that went into the resin that hadn't quite um, mixed in properly so tries to ensure that there aren't any little air pockets or voids in there so um, I always try and do that I mix it in the pot and then it gets a final mix either on a mixing pad or a piece of cardboard or something like that or in this case I can do it straight on the rudder it really doesn't matter so tomorrow we shall see Sanding done and also my morning exercise done which is good um, this is looking pretty much done to be honest with you there's just the odd little bit there's a, a few little voids in the original laminate that just need a little fill this side is perfect the other side just has a couple of little ripples which I'm going to put some uh, more filling compound on in a minute and then that can get buzzed over and then it's done there's a tape measure here because I asked the owner of the boat to go down to the boat and measure the distance from the top of the skeg down to the bottom where the heel plate goes on because I wanted to double check that having kind of done a little bit of work here and here I haven't taken the rudder out of the dimensions that it needs to be to fit and fortunately I'm pretty much bang on. I thought I'd be very very close but it's always good to check these things when you're not fitting the rudder yourself so I needed to get it down to 950 mil or less to get it to fit and um, the rudder is currently at 940 but I've got to put in some space there for the top hat the rim of the top hat on the bearing here and the heel plate which has had a slight mod done on it is ever so slightly higher than it was previously and that brings up to about 946 ish something like that and I have already pre-made some different thickness spacers some little packing washers of between half a mil up to about two and a half mil here so the guy when he refits his rudder if he feels it's necessary can pop these on in here um, just to space it up if he feels it's necessary I don't think it will be to be honest I think it's going to go straight back on as it is the option is there if he wants to use them um, so I'm going to mix up what is hopefully going to be the final bit of filling and fairing compound and uh, put it in a few little pieces around the rudder and then come back tomorrow, final sand, coat with eye build, and then she's done. wondering if there is a way to find out how many times I have said rudder in this video and also phrases like it's now the next day and sanding and fairing compound I expect there is but um, it is now the next day and the fairing compound on the rudder has now cured so um, I'm going to go and do some more sanding and uh, see if I can knock this back this should be the last sand and then I can get some high protect on this but um, you never know what voids you're going to find when you start sanding, but fingers crossed, it should all be good. So I'm going to get off and do that. I'm not going to video it because there is only so much sanding that the internet needs to see. So I will see you in, uh, well, hopefully about 20 minutes to half an hour.
Here it is, all sanded. It took um, half an hour or so just to buzz over all the bits and I had to do a bit of hand sanding as well, which I've been putting off because I knew I needed to do it at the last minute just to get in kind of tricky corners and bits and pieces. But this is absolutely perfect now. I think I'm really happy with that. And the other side is much the same. So um, I'm gonna give this a clean down because it's kind of dusty now. And then it's going to get the first of two coats of Hempel High Protect. Now High Protect is this stuff. It's a two component epoxy barrier coat. If you watched Project Lottie, um, which I will get back to at some point, uh, I use this as the barrier coat after the osmosis treatment. So I think I put four coats of this on it. It recommends three as a barrier coat. Um, I put four on because I'm probably going to end up sanding a little bit off on Lottie's bottom before she gets copper coat. On this application, this is just to seal all the filler and everything up. It's an epoxy filler, so it should be fine. But a couple of coats of this will just have it all nicely sealed up. And uh, then Mr. Customer can come along and collect it. Before I apply the Hypertext, if you've got this far through the video, that means you've probably enjoyed it. So why not give me a little thumbs up down below? And if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It really does help me grow the channel. And lastly, if you have donated to the channel, there's a link down in the description where you can buy me a beer. If you are one of the people that have donated over the last few weeks and months, thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, any money that I receive goes on beer. And also, hopefully, very, very soon, I'll be buying a better microphone and maybe a better camera and hopefully some better lighting as well. But I'm just saving up for it all. I want the channel to stand on its own two feet financially if I can. So any donations really are welcome. And ultimately, they benefit you, the viewer, because I can make better content. And there we go, that is the first coat of High Protect on. So I rolled that on with a fluffy roller and then just tipped it off with a nice brush. So I'm gonna take that tape off because this is an epoxy and it will cure pretty hard. Hopefully I'll have time to pop back tomorrow and stick, stick a second coat on there. And then she's all done. I'll save you the excitement of watching me put a second coat of High Protect on the rudder back there, but I think it's looking pretty good. I'm very, very pleased with it, and hopefully the owner will be pleased with it as well. It's turned out really nice. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a like, press the subscribe button if you can. It really helps support the show, as does sending me a few pounds using the link in the description. If you want to buy me a beer, I really appreciate it. I enjoy beer, and I will enjoy buying a new camera and a new microphone once I have saved up enough pennies. So. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers for now. Bye.